I hope you can see it. Tell me, please. Yes, I see. Yeah, okay. Uh, so today our topic is a message broker and Nets messaging system. Our agenda today is uh, first one, uh, modern distributed systems challenges. We'll review a short list of all challenges uh, about uh, modern distributed systems. Uh, the second one is uh, message brokers. We will review the nature of message brokers, uh, types, uh, several types of message brokers uh, and uh, how they communicate uh, with uh, different applications. Uh, the third one is Nets messaging systems. Uh, and uh, the last one, we will review a demo, uh, an application written in C++ with uh, Nets C client. Uh, so, uh, modern distributed system challenges. Uh, this is a short list uh, of all challenges. And uh, let's start with uh, heterogeneity. It, this is uh, about ability uh, for our components in our system to communicate, communicate with each other, even if they are running on different systems, on different hardware. And uh, uh, even if they are written in different languages. So your components can be written, for example, in Java and C++, and uh, they will be, will be able to communicate, communicate with each other. Uh, openness. Uh, this is the ability to introduce new components into your system easily. So, uh, so, for example, you have your components there communicate with each other and you trying to add a new component. So uh, for for us, uh, it's good uh, it's a good idea to make it this process easy. Uh, transparency, I would say that uh, uh, you know that nature of of distributed systems are complex uh, is complex. So uh, we would like to make it uh, as uh, easier as possible uh, and uh, make a view like this is a single system uh, and uh, concurrency. Uh, of course, we have many components in our system. They communicate with each other. They share uh, share data. Uh, and uh, this data is coming from one component to another component, for, for example. Uh, and this is uh, important to, to support concurrency in our system uh, security. Uh, sometimes we want to, to, for example, make identification for our components uh, to transmit data uh, in, security, in security way, I would say. Let's move on. And uh, let's talk about message broker, which uh, uh, solve all these challenges, previous challenges reviewed. Uh, in simple words, uh, message broker is just an application. Uh, it's, uh, an, uh, for example, it can be another service in our system uh, that's, uh, and it know about uh, producers application and consumer applications. Uh, so there may be many producer applications which uh, communicates with our message brokers and many consumer applications which uh, also communicates with our message brokers. Uh, basic components uh, of our, sorry, one second. Uh, basic components, uh, concepts of our message broker. Uh, the first one is a producer, a publisher, a publisher, is the one application who sends messages to our message broker. You can see it here, the upper of uh, message broker. Uh, the consumer or subscriber application, it consumes messages from message broker. Here you can see consumer applications. And the uh, query topic subject, it's the internal information inside of message broker. It's uh, like a, a store for messages. Uh, it can be done in different ways, but usually it uses a quiz. Uh, let's move on. Uh, for message uh, brokers, typically, typically there are several patterns. Uh, it's point-to-point -point and publish-subscribe. Point-to-point uh, -point pattern, you can see picture here. So we have just one 
producer and just one consumer. Uh, message broker uh, stores uh, uh, several queries, for example, uh, and uh, this is one-to-one -one relationship. So producer just uh, sends uh, a message to one consumer and uh, the button here is uh, sent one, received once. Sent, sent once, received once. So when producer sends a message, uh, the consumer, the only one consumer, received uh, receives message only once. Uh, and uh, another one pattern is uh, publish subscribe. Uh, this is typically one to many relationship. So there could be one publisher and uh, many subscriber subscribers. Uh, so Subscri typically subscribers are subscribed to a specific topic and publishers send uh, a message for this specific topic and all subscribers uh, receive these messages. Uh, usually, usually they uh, receive uh, this message, uh, all of them, all of the subscribers receive the one message, uh, but uh, it possibly it also possible to distribute one message uh, among us uh, among all subscribers so only one subscriber will receive this message randomly for example uh, and based on our previous slides let's uh, review architectural difference between uh, broker less architecture and the broker based architecture here you can see that uh, if uh, in our, there is no uh, message broker in our system. Services communicate with each other using their own way, uh, com their own communication. For example, one service can send to another service and receive from the uh, another one service message uh, in their own way. And the broken-based architecture, you can see that uh, all services communicate uh, with each other through message broker. So uh, this message is sent uh, to message broker and messages can be stored in message broker. Uh, so they are the only way how they, uh, the only one way how they can communicate with each other. Uh, let's review advantages. Uh, the first advantage is loss coupling. Uh, so the like the services becomes, uh, I would say, independent uh, from each other because uh, they just uh, de start depending on one service on a message broker, uh, and uh, this is a unique way to communicate with each other. Uh, message buffering delivery guarantee. So all messages can be buffered in a message broker and uh, all messages uh, uh, will be delivered. It's a guarantee. Uh, more flexible communication uh, and language independence. Your uh, services can be written in different languages, uh, like I said, in C++ or, or Java, uh, and they can uh can have a unique way to communicate with each other using message brokers uh, but there are also disadvantages uh, uh, potential performance bottleneck of course because uh, this is an additional application additional service uh, and uh, you should try to choose a message broker with good performance uh, and if there will be many services uh, communicate with each other. Of course, so there can be a performance bottleneck because of just one uh, message broker in your system. Uh, poten potential single point of failure. Uh, yes, since uh, if you have just one message broker in your system, uh, it can be possible that uh, your, uh, that your message broker will crash and uh, your entire system will be dead because uh, your services won't be able to communicate with, with each other. They have only way to communicate using a message broker and additional operational complexity. Uh, let's talk about NETS messaging system. Uh, so NETS is a um, technology uh, for uh, for creating 
distributed systems uh, with uh, high performance. Uh, it's uh, usually uh, uh, uses uh, message broker, of course, and uh, using that you using that you can create many applications which communicate with each other uh, and uh, can be written in different languages. Uh, NAT system consists of uh, core NATs and NAT streaming. Uh, today we will review just core NATs. Uh, the principle of uh, core NATs is at most once delivery, it's lightweight, performant, and always available. Uh, the principles of uh, NAT streaming it it's at least once delivery, replay, and replay of messages. At most, at most once delivery, it says that uh, the message will be delivered at, mo at most once for all subscribers, for example. Uh, and at least one, it means that uh, at least one message will be de delivered to the uh, subscriber of the message of uh, that system. Yes. Uh, how we usually develop our application using using nuts uh, usually there is a nets server which which should be running uh, while we running all our solution with uh, different services and uh, our applications uh, these services should uh, use uh, uh, nets client library uh, this Nets client library are allowed in different languages. In many, many languages, you can write uh, different uh, application in different languages in, in, in your system. And they should all uh, use uh, Nets client and uh, they will be communicate uh, with Nets server. And uh, this uh, Nets client uh, use TCP, TCP, yes. Let's continue. Let's review not subject based messaging. What is it? It's uh, how we can send our messages to our net net server, and uh, how our subscribers of net server uh, can receive these messages. Uh, typically, we have uh, a publisher. It's uh, in our net system. Uh, it's called publisher and uh, all subscribers are called uh, subscribers, simple. Uh, what we have, uh, we have a message and uh, topic, subject. Uh, using the subject, we can communicate with uh, different uh, subscribers because many subscribers can uh, be subscribed on different topics. Uh, here you can see, uh, for example, time, yes. Uh, and the uh, publisher can, uh, for example, publish uh, to this uh, subject a message and all subscribers of, of this uh, topic will, uh, will receive this message at once, uh, just only once, sorry. Let's continue. Here uh, we can see a subject hierarchies. So uh, hierarchy is separated by dot. Uh, you can see that uh, our main, for example, a main subject is time, and all uh, uh, sub subjects uh, are uh, distributed by dots, as you can see. Uh, also, uh, we can use wildcards uh, for our topics. Uh, for example, uh, matching a single token, uh, we can use a star. Uh, for a matching single to token, that means, for example, if we publish in this subject, uh, and uh, we can uh, get a message, uh, our subscriber can get a message using this uh, uh, this subject, and also we can uh, use uh, this uh, uh, match, uh, this wildcard matching a single token just uh, to. It means that uh, it can receive uh, any any subject with uh, uh, any any word here between dots, and uh, matching multiple tokens. Uh, for example, we can publish uh, for this topic, as you can see, and all our subscribers can receive uh, at least uh, using the same topic 
name uh, and for example mention all uh, all sub subtopics uh, using uh, this uh, wildcard and uh, as you can see if we just use uh, uh, the first one's uh, wildcard we the subscriber won't receive uh, the message from the publisher by this topic let's continue uh, publish subscribe uh, this is uh, a simple pattern. So we have just a publisher. We publish a message to our uh, subject by our subject, uh, and all our subscriber receive will receive this message uh, that are subscribed uh, to this topic uh, only once. At the same time, uh, I would like to demonstrate to you with uh, Net CLI how we can do it. So let's just try. As in not clients. Uh, of course, you should start uh, net server. If uh, there's a CLI tool, uh, we can simply start our net server. And uh, our using net CLI, for example, we can publish a message to a specific topic. Here's a topic, and we can publish a message to this topic. Here we can see that it's published eight bytes to test message topic. Uh, let's create a subscribers to this topic. Subscribing on test message topic. Let's try another one. Here we can see that uh, our subscriber received uh, a message on a specific topic. Uh, for example, if we create another one, uh, we can also publish another message. Our first one subscriber will receive this message and uh, a new created one also receive this message. Uh, if we create another subscriber uh, for another topic, for example, and we will publish the message. Our first one subscriber will receive this message, the second also but the third one will not receive this message because he used uh, another topic. But if we create uh, a subscriber using wildcard, for example, star, yes. Uh, and let's publish another one message. Yes, we will receive this message from the first subscriber. On the second subscriber and the new for the new created one isn't wildcard so that's it for that's it for uh, publish subscribe pattern uh, another one interesting pattern is the request reply pattern what it means it means that uh, uh, we can subscribe on a specific topic waiting for a message and our uh, on the other side so someone can uh, a replier can be created to reply for a specific uh, based on specific topic uh, it can reply a message uh, and uh, we can also using we can simulate this example using CLI our net CLI, for example, let's stop, let's stop. For example, we can not using CLI not reply on a specific topic. Uh, and here we put a message for this topic. Topic help, please.
so you can see that it uh, this uh, replier is listening uh, for the specific topic and uh, we can request create a requester Here we can see that uh, we uh, obtained messages from the reply, replier uh, for this specific topic. That's how it works. Uh, let's continue. And the last one pattern uh, I wanted to show you is uh, queue groups. Queue groups. Uh, so for example, uh, we can have several subscribers and we can add them for a specific group. Uh, what it means, if our publisher uh, pushed the message, uh, for example, one, two, three, yeah, for the specific uh, group, these uh, messages will be distributed by subscriber. That means that uh, uh, message will be sent to a randomly chosen subscriber. Uh, only once and all other subscribers from this group want to receive message and um, just uh, for example i wanted to show you that uh, uh, it uh, it relates to the repliers uh, here you can see that uh, when we created a replier for this specific topic it autom automatically edits uh, into the group uh, not reply 2020 uh, 22 uh, that's because this is a default group, uh, but you can also define your own groups uh, and uh, all these messages will be distributed by subscribers uh, in the specific group. Uh, that's it mm, about Q groups pattern. Uh, that's actually all I wanted to show you, uh, not show just uh, show from my presentation yes uh not cover topics it's net streaming that's uh, another part of nets uh probably in the future we'll be talking about it also and that security feature so like uh, it's as i know uh, there's an authentication present at least authentication uh, and clustering you create you can create uh, several servers uh, into uh you introduce several servers and nets servers into your system. So uh, it will act like cross, uh, clustering. Uh, here you can find uh, useful links uh, for nets. Uh, and actually I recommend you to look, uh, take a look into nets client. Uh, here you can find uh, how you can integrate uh, nets in your C++, C++ applications. Uh, yeah, and that's actually it. Uh, uh, and now I want to show you a demo using nets C client. Let's review uh, something like architecture of application. So let's imagine that uh, we have a manufacturer that builds uh, RAM and CPU. Uh, and let's imagine that on the other side, we have a builders that creates computers from uh, RAM and CPU. Uh, what I wanted to show you, it's example with this manufacturers. Uh, for example, we have an Orion manufacturer, which create a CPU and RAM and uh, Andromeda manufacturer, which creates Andromeda CPU and Andromeda RAM. And for example, we have uh, Orion Builder, which uh, uh, just received this CPU and RAM and tried to build a computer. Uh, the same story about Andromeda Builder. It will uh, receive uh, CPU and RAM from Andromeda uh, Manufacturing and it will try to build a computer with this uh, hardware. Uh, that's it. Uh, let's review the code a little bit. I wanted to show you how we can do it in C. 
C, C++. So uh, here we can create a connection using Nets. Let's dive into it. Uh, do not forget, if you are writing in C++, don't forget to extend C and include this library. Uh, the core here is Nets connection. Uh, when we try to connect, uh, we, we will initialize options for our connection. Uh, personally, I use localhost and uh, some port for it. Uh, and uh, here we will try to connect, connect to our net server. If the net server is not running, uh, connection will be failed and we will obtain uh, another another from Nets OK status and uh, we can log it and return an error, for example. Uh, let's move on. Here we can see a supplier. So uh, we have a manufacturer that simply just creates uh, uh, CPU and RAM as, uh, and to return some components, for example. Usually, uh, personally, I like to use uh, flat buffer, uh, just create uh, a buffer of pointer, uh, like a array of bytes and return it. Uh, the, cool, the cool thing that we can use, use a net, uh, we can send uh, uh, bytes, uh, array of bytes and all, also strings. I like to use, uh, so I, that's why I decided to use a uh, flat buffer because uh, we can easily create our structure structures and to send uh, serializing it into array of bytes and send it to nets. So here we just create a CPU and RAM and our supplier, what uh, our supplier actually do is uh, uh, it's publish, uh, publish by a for a specific topic, uh, the information about CPU and RAM. Uh, so let's dive into it. It's a NETS function that uh, accept the connection uh, of the NETS uh, topic. Uh, for us is, for example, manufacturer's components, Orion CPU, and sends uh, it to uh, Nets. That's how it works. Uh, so that's it about our publishers. We can just start them, for example. So it started and it starts uh, sending uh, built, uh, built RAM and CPU into Nets. The same story about uh, Andromeda factory. On the other side, we were talking about uh, builders that receive uh, the information about CPU and RAM so let's uh, dive into it and uh, review how it works. Uh, builders are the same story about connection. We just need to create a connection to nets, uh, for example, using localhost. Uh, our builder is just uh, set uh, this CPU and RAM uh, and tries to build computer. Build a computer is just as, uh, names of the CPU, RAM, and the, its own name, for example, for simplicity. Our build factory, what it what it does, it on startup, it starts in consuming CPU and RAM from a specific factory. Uh, what it actually is. Uh, uh, this is not connection subscribe. It's something similar that we used in CLI, not CLI subscribe. It's uh, create a subscription for a specific topic. Uh, and actually it uh, requires a subscription. It's another and it's feature. Uh, yeah, this is simply a subscription and it adds something uh, about uh, interested topic. Uh, when uh, it also can be drained, so we can drain our subscription. That means that uh, 
we will not be interested in a specific topic, but uh, all, mes all pending messages will be processed. Uh, yes. And uh, when we receive a message, uh, our callback is gone. Uh, and so we, I decided to ha use a handler for a message. So we receive uh, a Nets message from, from the Nets for a specific topic, and we will try to handle it. Uh, we, when we can get a data from this message, get data length, and uh, again, using flat buffers, uh, we can get a specific object from this uh, data bytes. Uh, after that, uh, this build factory, it will try to build a computer. It simply uh, accept the RAM and CPU from the specific uh, a manufacturer and will build a computer for, from the specific RAM and CPU. So let's run it. For example, a RAM builder. Here we can see uh, we can see that uh, it accepts a CPU and RAM as. Uh, specifically from Orion manufacturer, not from Andromeda. And uh, we can see some characteristics characteristic of it. After CPU and RAM accepted, uh, it built a computer with, uh, with this accepted RAM and CPU. The same story about Andromeda. Here we can see that it uh, obtains uh, uh, obtains RAM and CPU only from uh, Andromeda manufacturer with this by a specific topic. So actually that's it. That's all I wanted to show you. I think uh, there will be questions. Yeah, so do we have questions? I think I cannot. So we have uh, the first question in the chat. Uh, let me read it. Uh, do we have p for any other languages yes of course uh, i believe it uh, uh, you love to create a go application using nets go at least go i know uh, and there there are a big list of languages supported for nets you can see it from the official nets documentation of course Uh, Vladislav, was your uh, question answered? Great, thanks. Any other questions? Okay, if no, um, then thank you, Alexei. Oh, we have. <laughs> what is the main difference between message bus and message broker? Mm. Mm. Message is something that you use uh, to send into, for example, if you are talking about message brokers, okay? A message, it's something that you send to message broker and uh, you publish it and uh, our subscriber receive this message, for example, uh, if we are talking about, I cannot, okay. Uh, let me show you another one time. Uh, here we see an, uh, again our CLI. We can uh, use using our net CLI. We can, for example, publish a message here we can Publish and uh, this is a specific topic. For example, just message, and uh, another 
argument is a, a message, the, the message, for example, test message. Here is the message. It will, what uh, our subscribers will receive. Uh, a message broker, it's uh, an application which uh, receives uh, messages and uh, sends messages to subscribers. Message at it uh, what is uh, published and received. Thank you, Alexei. Thank you, Vlad, for your question. Do we have other questions? Okay, I think we can uh, come to the end of our meeting. Uh, Alexei, uh, thank you very much for your performance. It was really interesting to uh, listen to what you've been sharing with us. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining our meeting. I uh, hope to see you on our other community events. Uh, wishing a great day ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.